Okay. Good evening. We're ready to get started. It's 8.40. We're, not, we're learning tonight Maseches Psachim, Daf Lamed Vav. Uh, we'll be beginning about halfway down on Lamed Hay and with Bays for a couple of very quick, rapid-fire Gemaras that are just going to analyze the Mishnah that we learned on Shabbos on Daf Lamed Hay. Uh, we said that you can make uh, matzah out of the Chameshis Mine Dagan. And then the Mishnah also said that as long as you take Meisra off, you can use it, which is obvious, and a whole bunch of obvious cases. And both Latibusa Ula Griusa were listed in the Mishnah. We're going to go through those. Um, and uh, then we will uh, move on to it. Basically, the whole night is a variety of scenarios of what we are allowed and not allowed to use for kosher chametz. Um, I mean, obviously, halacha some of this doesn't come out as practical because we buy pre made chametz. We buy pre made matzah. So the matzah that we buy is already pre packaged and hopefully it's not broken. And then shalom Yisrael. But back in the day, when people were making their own, they were harvesting from the field. So it was much more practical then. So we're starting about halfway down. The Mishnah had said, literally halfway down, Meister Shani, the Hektish Shaniftu. So it said that if you take off Meister Shani and if you're Po the Hektish, then that uh, then you're allowed to make matz out of that. Yeah, of course you're allowed to make matz out of that. Says Gemara Pshita. Says Gemara, no. That's when you pay the principal, but you did not pay the Chomesh, which is done when one is doing a pidyon. If you don't pay the Chomesh, the Kamash Malan, the Ein Chomesh Ma'akev, that it is still considered to be a pidyon. And therefore, even though you should have paid the Chomesh, you should have paid the extra 25%, Afal Pikain, the halacha is that it's still eligible for matzah. Ve'akon in Bechalu with Truma, of course, that should also work. Why can't Kohanim make matzah out of Chal and Truma, Pshita? Says the Gemara, no. Maybe we need it to be the case that matzah has to be good for everyone. And they're Kohanim, so they can eat the challah, they can eat the truma, but I can't. I'm a regular, I'm a regular Yisrael. So maybe the Havimina of the Gemara is that when you make matzah, it has to be eligible for everyone. Kamash Malan, that's not true. And here is the Gzeira Shava that we have matzos, matzos, riba. Matzos, matzos, the word matzos, are, that word matzos is found in two different locations. And riba, it is an inclusive language, namely, that even though it's true that this matzah is not eligible for all, it's only eligible for kohanim, even though that's the case, it's still considered to be halachically fine. Two-thirds of the way down, Lamed Hayam and Bez at the two dots, of a loba tevel. Thank you very much. Everybody knows tevel is problematic. Tevel is food that is not properly tithed. And uh, I, I don't even know why is this in the Gemara. It says the Gemara Pshita. Of course, no one's allowed for You just came from the Kohanim where you gave me a Chiddush that the Kohanim are allowed to eat from Chala and from Chuma because even though nobody else can. Now you're telling me something that nobody can eat. Unbelievable. Why, what is the Gemara talking about? It says the Gemara, Lo tzricha, the tevel No, it's a Chiddush. We're only talking about Tevel Midrabanan. What was the case? It's a flower pot. It's an atzit she'eno naku that does not have a hole in the bottom of the flower pot. Namely, it's not connected to the ground. So anything that grows out of it has a status of tevel, has a status of being untied and requires trumas and maestros, but only midrabanon. When it's not actually connected to the ground, it is a different status. So let's say you lived in Eretz Yisrael and let's say that there was a din of truma on your, on your stuff. And in your house, you have a flower pot and it's growing uh, vegetation. Ladina, you're obligated to tithe that food. Just midrabanan. So the chiddush of the Gemara is, is that even if you grow the wheat in an atzit she'en onakov, even if you grow it in a place where midoraisa there's no tevel, but only rabbinically there's no tevel, that's a sufficient uh, reduction in the capacity of this wheat to be used for matzah. That is the chiddush of the Gemara. Next sugya. So if you have Maiserishon and you didn't take the truma off of it, again, I, well, these are basics. Like, why is the Gemara teaching all the, every time they come up with the Chiddush? So let's see what the Chiddush is here. So that should be obvious. Maybe you, uh, you did this at an earlier point in the process where you smooth things out. We had this question answered yesterday. Yesterday, we saw this uh, question that was asked from Rapapa to Abaye. And the answer was that once it's called Dagon, it's in a whole new status. So Therefore, uh, we, we have to only be dealing with the case where it is where it is uh, not yet dug on. What about the next case? What about Meister Shani? What about cases where there was no pidyon done? Pshita, obviously. No pidyon was done. It's also for everyone to eat. Answers the Gemara, Le'olam de Niftu. Really, it was Niftu. So then what does the Mishnah mean? My low Niftu. What did the Mishnah mean when it said low Niftu? That's what the Mishnah said. You can't say low Niftu means Niftu. That, that doesn't work. So uh, if, if it's low niftu, then it's low niftu. If it wasn't poda, then it wasn't poda. You're saying now that it's poda? Says Igmar, it kind of was. Shalo niftu kehilchasa. They did a pidyon, but it wasn't done properly. And here are a couple of examples. Examples. They took Meister Shani shepida o al gabe asimon. They uh, the Meister Shani was poda, but it was onto an asimon. 
But we remember asimonim from when we were little kids. If you ever went to Israel, the ones that were used in the machine, they had a little hole in the middle. So that's not what this is referring to. It's a coin. Rashi writes it's a coin that's smooth. And that does not work. When we do a pidyon, we have a dindo rice. It has to be on a coin that has a tzura on it. It says the Gemara, the Rahman Omar, the Tzartah Kesef, Davar Sheyesh Lo Tzura. You can only do a pidyon on Meister Sheni, on something that has a shape on it, on something that has an engraving or that's raised on it, but you cannot do it on a coin that's flat, dindo raisa. Also as well, the hekte shechilulu al gabe karka, if you uh, try to do this with karka, that doesn't work either. The Rahman Amar, Vanasana kesef it has to be something kesef, it has to be something tangible, uh, an item that you hand over, but the ground of the earth is not considered sufficient for this, it has to be something hands-on. So in all of those cases, it's a pigeon without having done a pigeon, it's kind of a poor quality job done there. And uh, the din is that, he, that even with this poor quality job, so what's the halacha? It does not count. It does not count. You have to do it properly. Uh, last of the short lines, probably, somewhere about ten, eight, ten lines from the bottom of the page, says the Gemara, Tanu Rabbanon. Yachal yotzei adami dechavas v'tevel shalom niskan. Maybe a person would be able would, to have matzah with tevel shalom niskan, with food that was not yet um, fixed. This is a brisa. And now the Gemara is going to interrupt to this brisa with a very quick question answer. What are you talking about? Kol tevel nami halom niskan. All tevels unfixed. What what what, what, what Bryce are you talking about? Says the Gemara. Yeah, of course. What we're talking about first long line. It's only been partially tithed. How so? They only took the trumagdolo but not the trumas meiser or meiser rishon below meiser sheni vafilo meiser ani. They only did part of it. It doesn't mean that it was zero done. It was only part of it was done. So what was our question? How do we know? Have a mina that maybe that we should think that tevel, which is now we now know what it means, tevel that is partially done, maybe that should work. Talmud Lomar, absolutely not. Four lines from the bottom. Lo socha lo chametz mishi suro mishum bal socha lo chametz. When do we say that you have something that's eligible to actually be matzah? That's when it has the capacity to become chametz. Yatza um, zeh to exclude this case. Which is what? Here, the Isser status on the food isn't because of chametz. It's because of tevel. But it's, it's still chametz. It's just it also has a din of tevel. So asks the Gemara a very simple question. What are you talking about? The Isur de Chametz, Lehechan Azla, a rhetorical question. Where did the Isser status go of the Chametz? It's still Chametz. The fact that it's also Tevel doesn't make it not Chametz. So you said that the rule should be that as long as it can become Chametz, then it can become Matzah. So it can become Chametz. It's also Tevel. I agree with you. I agree. But it still can become Chametz. So then therefore it should be Matzah. Says Gemara, what, what do you mean? Where did the Isra of Chametz go? The fact that it's Tevel doesn't make it not eligible for Matzah. Says the Gemara, well, that depends on which of the Tanoim you hold like. Because there's a very big Machlok as Tanoim about the following idea, which is referred to as Ein Isr Chal Al Isr. We do not layer Isuri Do Raiso. Let's just see how the Gemara presents this. Amar of Sheshes, the Amor of Sheshes writes, How money? Who is our Mishnah like? It must be that it's Rav Shemini Do Amar, Ein Isr Chal Al Isr. We do not allow for the layering of Isurim. Take a look at the Rabbeinu Hananel on the bottom of the page. Um, uh, my page is all the way at the bottom. It has a, 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 a bold, a Dibur Hamaskal. It says, Vidachinan, Vidachi, with an apostrophe, Vidachinan. And this is a, a beautiful, simple edition of the Rabbeinu Hananel. He writes as follows. Vidachinan, Hamas Nisan Reb Shemini. Really, our mission is Reb Shemini. Desavar, Ein Isser, and he adds in the word Chametz. Ein Isser, Chametz, Chal, Al Isser, Tevel. The Isser of Chametz can't overlay on top of the Isser. Which Isser came first? This is what some of the Rishonim write. And the Rach, of course, is one of them. Once there is a primary Isser, then the secondary Isser that comes on top of it says, Rav Shimon, Ein Isser Chal Al Isser. And if you do something wrong, you only violate the first of those two Isserim. Titania, take a look at the Bryce of the Gemara quotes. Titania, Rav Shimon Omer, Ha'ochel Nevela, B'yom HaKippurim, Pater. If a person eats nevela, a nevela is an animal that's not, that's not shechted properly. What do you get an iser for? For eating nevela. What about Yom Kippur? Pater. It's not an iser derisa. It's unbelievable. Ain iser chal al iser. We know that one of the chameshes you knew by Yom Kippur, you're not allowed to eat an iser derisa to eat. Sometimes, if the animal is shechted properly, it is. But it's not true here. It's not true in the realms of ain iser chal al iser. Now, the Rabbanan, Argue on Reb Shimon elsewhere, not here. This is a, a, a sugya that is quoted in Kedushin and in Shuas and in Nazir and in Krisus. And the machlokas is whether or not we say Ein Isr Chal Al Isr everywhere or somewhere. 
Now I could, I, this morning I saw Ruben Handler. I know he learns that. I said to him, you need to explain me something. Here we say Enes or Chal Alisser, because what did we have? We had Chametz and Tevel. First it was Tevel and then it became Chametz. And we said, no, 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 Enes or Chal Alisser. Didn't we learn six days ago, five days ago, a case of Truma that was Chametz? Why don't we say there Enes or Chal Alisser? So the Rishonim, I looked this up in the Encyclopedia Talmudis, if you have this at home, pages after page. I mean, this is a whole arichus. This is a whole world in halacha of what the machlokas of Einish or Chal Alisser means. Nevertheless, we're not going to get into that now. Uh, we spoke out some theories. Some of them did not play out. Whatever the case may be. The point is that here in this case, what the Gemara is saying is that we must be holding like Rib Shimon. Why? Because we said that you can't make uh, matzah out of the Meiser Shani. Um, we can't make ma- out of this tevel, out of this kind of quasi tevel. You cannot make matzah because it's the iser tevel. I then, ha- what about the chametz? Answer the Gemara. We hold like Rav Shimon, and Rav Shimon says in iser chal iser. Top line, lamed bav menal. The Gemara says Ravina Amar afidu temar rabbanan. Even the dissenting opinion against Rav Shimon, who holds that we do say that iser is chal iser, namely that you can have both isurim at the same time, he disagrees. In our case where you have Tevel and Chametz, and he disagrees with the case of Nevel and Yom He just disagrees. Yes, yes, sir, absolutely. But even according to him, says the Gemara, no problem. Maybe the touch of the Gemara is that when do we say that as long as it has the capacity to be Chametz, it can be Matzah, that's when it's exclusively Chametz. But when it's Chametz plus another Isser, then the equation doesn't work. That's a, a good svara, says the Now we have two Isurim that are co- coinciding. So again, Ravina says, that we hold like Rub Shimon, that the Anis or Chalaliser. Maybe we hold like the Rabban and then Yeshis or Chalaliser. So how does it work? No problem. No problem. Maybe what our Gemara meant was that because it's Chametz plus Tevel, so then the equation doesn't work. But it Maybe if it was only chametz, that's when we would say, good, then the tevel de Rabbanon can work. Says Gemara, that, yeah, midi bilvad, see, you added in the word bilvad. That word is nowhere to be found in the Bryce on the bottom of Laman Hayim Abbas. And therefore the Gemara rejects the opinion of Ravina, ala machvarta, kid of We therefore embrace the sheet of Rav Sheshes that our Mishnah must be speaking about ein iser chal which is why the tevel, which is chametz, cannot be used for matzah. We're on Lamed Vav Amid Aleph, about six lines down. Tana Rabbanon, another brisa. Yachol Yotze Adam Yidei Chovasa B'Maiser Sheni B'Yerushalayim. Maybe we should assume that one can be uh, when they say Yotze Adam Yidei Chovasa that you can make matzah with Maiser Sheni in Yerushalayim. Talmud Lomar that will not work because the pasuk says Lechem Oni, and then there's a play on words Oni Lechem Oni. This is the first time we were seeing this in Pesach. And Lechem Oni, of course, means the, the, the bread of affliction, however it's translated, poor people with an ayin. Now, we also know of a halachic status called aninus. It's a super weird place to be in. Aninus is when a person is in between the death of an immediate relative and between the time that that person is buried. If you're an immediate family member, you're not allowed to do mitzvot saseh. Uh, it's a machlok, if you're allowed to. We pass in the chumrah. Like when my brother passed away, he couldn't put on tefillin that day. Super weird, super strange. Your whole life, don't ever miss tefillin that your your mamish potter the gamri. So says the Gemara. There's a play on words here. Tam lomar lechem oni, ma she neechal be aninus with an aleph. Even though it's a play on words, that which is eaten when a person is in this awkward phase between the death of an immediate relative and burial, yotzazet to exclude meiser sheni she eno neechal be aninus el besimcha di berbi yoseg lili. The reason why you can't have meiser sheni because meiser sheni is a din of simcha, and that's why it can't be used for matzah. Because if Meiser Shani were to be matzah, well, the matzah has a din of aninus. It has, it has a quasi din of aninus based on the play on words, according to Rabbi Yosef Lili. Rabbi Akiva Omer, nope, matzos, matzos, riba. Second time we've seen this today, to include this case of, uh, of Meiser Shani, that it works. In Cain, Rabbi Akiva, matam lomar lechem oni. What's with the lechem oni? He says, lechem oni is teaching you something totally different. What does that teach you? Prat le'isa sheni losha b'yayin v'shem and v'yayin v'shem and v'dash. It's a din that we've learned before. Uh, lechem ashira, uh, matzah ashira, that you're not allowed, he says, to use for uh, the mitzvah de oraisa of matzah, you're not allowed to use um, flour that's mixed with wine or oil or honey. My time with Rabbi Akiva, why does Rabbi Akiva not agree with Rabbi Yosei Aglili? What about the lechem oni component? We answered a little bit. Let's explain a little bit more. My time with Rabbi Akiva, miksiv lechem oni? Yes, that's how it's read, but how is it written? Oni ksiv, yesh 
Aim Lemikra. This is a huge machlok esther out shas that comes up by the Tanaim all the time. Do we follow the letters as they look in the Torah? The word doesn't say oni, ayin vav nun yud. It's not lechem oni. It doesn't read that way when you look at it, just the letters. It would say ani, ayin nun yud. So he says, oni with a vav. If you have the word oni with a vav, Rashi says that would imply aninus because it's referred to as oni aleph vav nun yud. That's how we refer to the person as an oni. But with, if it's if it's aim, yesh aim le mikra, if we always follow the tradition of how it's actually written and not how it's pronounced, it says Rabbi Akiva, nothing to talk about, aniksi. We don't look at the way that it sounds, we look at the way that we see it. Yesh aim le mikra, that's how it's written, aniksi. Rabbi Yosei aglidi, mi karinan ani. When you lame, do you say lechev ani? No, oni karinan. And he says yesh aim le mesores, that we follow the way our tradition, how we read it not how the letters look. And therefore they have a machlokas. It's a grammar question about whether Meiser Shani should be included. And because the word Oni is read with the O sound, therefore Rabbi Yossi Aglili holds that Ladina, it doesn't count as Matzah. Mashin came Rabbi Akiva, who looks at that Pasuk and says, the letter looks like the word Ani. The word looks like the word Ani. Therefore, Ladina, you can be Makayim a mitzvah to Raisa. There's one letter, the letter Vav, is the Nafkamina between Maisar Shani being eligible for Matsumi to Raisa or not. Good. We have Akiva Haida Karina Be Oni. Why does it say Oni? What's the, what's the Vav for? If you don't use the Vav in Oni to teach me X, then what is it teaching you? Rabbi Yossi, I gleefully told me that it teaches me that you're not allowed to eat Maisar Shani, but you said it's mutter to eat Maisar Shani. So it's for, for Chametz, for Matzah, excuse me, for Matzah. So then what does the Vav mean? He says Kiddush to Amar Shmuel, about a third of the way down, the Vav Medalev, to Amar Shmuel, Lechem Oni, Lechem She'onin Alav Dvarim Harbe. We say a lot of things about this. Ayin Rashi, about 12 lines down, Rashi says, Zibur Maskal She'onin Alav Dvarim, She'gomrim Alav as a Halel, Ve'omrim Alav Haggadah. We say Halel, Gomrim, language of completing a full Halel. And as well, we say the Haggadah. You should know, this is a very strange law. To read the Haggadah is one of the 613 mitzvahs. Minei Obey. It is one of the mitzvahs in and of itself. Shilas, where's the bracha? Asher Kiddush Hanav Mitzvah Sav. It's Yibano Al what? Al Sifor Yitzias Mitzrayim. The, the post can discuss. There are a few mitzvahs in the Torah that we don't make brachos on when we do those mitzvahs. Uh, the mitzvah of Tash Mishamita doesn't have a bracha. Afal Pida, there's a mitzvah of Seishel Torah. It's mitzvah of Ona. Why do we make a bracha? It's very strange. So there are some except that post can speak about the, okay, there's just some logistical challenges. But here too, it's very strange that we don't make the bracha. Asher Kiddush Hanav Mitzvah Sav. It's Yibano. Al mikra, al whatever it is. I'll see all mitzvah see where it says mitzvah. So good. These are shilas that are asked. Really yeah, but that's not the language of Asher Kiddushan of a mitzvah Savit Sivan. So when we do a birchas and mitzvah, we typically have a rule that we make a bracha over last yas. And we learned that din here, Arabin, here, somewhere. We learned about over last yas and that you, uh, well, <laughs> we're not back at Arabin, no. <laughs> Slow down. I'm still recovering. <laughs> so, so, so that's the din is that, yeah, we, we want to make the bracha by Shirk Hashanah Mitzvah Savit Sivanu. Uh, another strange exception, maybe it's a little unique actually, just by Birchos Torah, is that uh, the post can write that if you say Asher Bachar Banu and then you don't learn Torah afterwards, you're still Yote. We don't make the bracha of Asher Kedoshan of Mitzvah Savit Sivan Lasog B'Di every time we sit down. Why not? But you put on tefillin, you go to the bathroom, you come back, you make another bracha on the tefillin. You uh, go to the bathroom, you come back to learn, you don't, by the talus, you don't. So there's, like, there's some strange exceptions, it's a whole world, the birchos mitzvah. Anyways, uh, let's move on, that's a side point. But the point is that it is a mitzvah d'oraisa to, uh, to read the Haggadah. Anyways, this is how Rabbi Akiva learns the letter vav in oni. The pronunciation of oni is to remind us that lechem sha'on in a love dvarm harbe. The Sava Rebbe Akiva, wait a minute, you just said something in passing that we need to analyze. The Sava Rebbe Akiva, Isa Sheni Losha, B'yayin B'shem and Zadash, lo. He, he holds that that's not considered matzah. But wait a minute, we saw Brisa somewhere else. We have Tanya, third of the way down, Lamed Vav Amad Aleph. Ein Lashen Isa B'Pesach B'yayin B'shem and Zadash. The Tanakama, he says that you're not supposed to. What if you did? What if you did? You did the wrong thing. You took dough, you took flour, you added in honey. Fine. The im lush, if you actually did need the dough that way. So then machlokes, three way machlokes tanoim. And we're, we're looking for Rabbi Akiva. Remember what we're looking for, because Rabbi Akiva was the one who said that you're not allowed. We're going to see here that he does allow it. Rabbi Gamliel, Omer Tisaref Miyad. Good. He says, it's cheating, you got to burn it right away. That's considered chametz. The chachamim omrim yeachel, mutter, the opposite end of the, of the, of the spectrum, totally mutter to eat its matzah. Good to go. Uh, what does Rabbi Akiva say? Vam Rabbi Akiva, Shabbasi um, haisa. Uh, I spent uh, some time, Eitzel Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yoshua. Vilashti lahem isa. And I made them bread, v'yayin v'shem and v'dvash, v'lo amar davar. They didn't say one word. What does that imply? Nothing wrong with it. 
But, but a few lines ago, you seem to say that it's not allowed. Yet when it came to Rabbi Yoshu and Rabbi Eliezer, no problem at all. And this line is difficult to understand without the Gemara's explanation because it doesn't make sense within the flow of Rabbi Akiva. Who said Ein Lashen? That was a Tanakama. So the Gemara says, Asal the Tanakam. The Avabishem Lush in Mekatvin Bo, even though you're not allowed to be lush with it, you can take these liquids, the honey and the wine, and you can baste the top of the challah with the honey, with whatever you want. That's totally fine. You just can't knead it into the dough. And the Gemara just adds, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they just did it. What? It's not water. No, but the Gemara, look at, look at the very top of Lamed Hayam and Bays. The very top of Lamed Hayamid base, Umay Peros and Machmitzin. That's what we said. That was why we said that these things don't make a difference. And Ladina, he helped. We don't, this is a dangerous thing to do. We don't, we don't do it. I'm not saying it's Ladina. I'm just saying that it is a sheet in the Gemara. And we see the May Peros and Machmitzin. And that's why over here it's not problematic. So that was part of the Tanakama sheet. He said, That line goes to the Tanakama. And then the Gemara, on, in regards to, to the basting on the top, the egg wash, if you can knead with it, then you can baste with it. What's this? Uh, what are you doing? Splitting hairs here. It's either allowed or it's not allowed. Pick one. So that was a chachamim. And then they said, and everyone agrees that you should not use warm water because the warm water um, speeds up the process of the leavening of the bread. That's what we do when people make challah now. They put in some hot water. It speeds things up. Fine. Says the Gemara, a contradiction within Rabbi Akiva. In one space, you said that you're not allowed to use yain, dvash, and shemen. And over here, it seems to be totally motor because you did in front of Rabbi Elias and Rabbi Yoshua. Nobody said a thing. Totally fine. Contradiction within Rabbi Akiva. Says the Gemara, crazy answer. Lokasha, Just depends. Which day are we more strict about? Day one, of course, we're more strict. We have a mitzvah that I said to eat matzah. On that day, we're going to be more strict. And then we're going to say you're not allowed. However, on Yom Tov Sheni, we can be more lenient. Kid Amar Luhu Rabbi Yoshua Livnei. Rabbi Yoshua said to his son, Yom Akama, on the first day of Yontiv, Loti Loshu Libechalva, do not make Bread for me, do not loshu from the word lush, do not need bread for me using milk. However, mikan va'elech, starting with the second day of Yantiv, loshu li bechalva. Remember, we learned about this? Can't make milk like bread. Says the Gemara, what are you talking about? You can't make milk like bread. We already learned about this. The im lush, and if you did make milk like bread, kol hapas asurim in the hergal Totally not allowed. Totally not allowed. So what are you totally, uh, where, where is this coming from? So the Gemara says, sorry, I put in the wrong word. It wasn't milk. On that first day, what did Rabbi say to his sons? Just in honey. Milk for sure is not allowed. But from the second day, you're allowed. Says the Gemara, second wide line. Really, it is milk. He says that under certain circumstances, when it's like the eye of a shore, ke'ayin Torah, tough and shin, shora, it's like the eye of a shore, hachanami ke'ayin Torah. Here too, when you make milchig bread, ke'ayin Torah, like the eye of, a, uh, of an animal, so then it's permissible. This is quoted in the Gemara, big machlokas in the Rishonim. What does ke'ayin Torah mean like the eye? Does it mean like the shape? that has a funky shape to it. So as long as the bread has a unique shape to it, you're good to go. Or is it the size reference? What's the Ke'in Torah? Machlokas and the Rishonim. Shulchan Aruch and Yoradea, Simen Sadi Zion. Here's what the Shulchan Aruch writes. Ein lash isa b'chalav. You're not allowed to knead dough with milk. Shema yavo la'achla im basar. Because people are, we habitually eat bread with everything. We eat bread with everything. Be'im lash. And if you did so, Kol hapas aser afilu le'achla levada. You're not even allowed to eat it on its own. Rabbinic injunction, lest we may come to eat it with meat. V'im haya davar muat k'dei achila bevasachas. If it was small enough, bite-sized pieces. Bite-sized pieces. Oh, or sheshi natura sapas sheteni keres. Or it was made in a way that looks different that everyone's like, what's with the bread? You'd be like, no, no, it's milchig bread. Fine, no problem. So then says Shulchan Aruch, then mutter, then that's totally fine. So we do Paskin this way. The post can get into the discussion. What about like milk like rugalach? Because that's, it's not bread that you would bench on, but, but like people eat it. People eat rugalach all the time. Most rugalach are paru. So maybe we used to get them in Kiwi Kids, right? You get them in Kiwi Kids, you can have them for Shabbos dessert, Givaldic. They're all paru. Are you allowed to make those milk? So some of the post can say, that's not a problem. That's not lechem. That's not, what? Right, right, because we would be, like the language in Shas is, 
the language in Shas is, is, is your language. You have lafes bo bipas. Like we would, we would take the bread and we would dip it into condiments. We would make sure we, yeah, that would kind of be the people doing now. The Shiloh, can you dip your soup? Can you dip hot bread into boiling hot soup? All these Shilas, Klish, Lishe, yeah, it's a good Shilas. They're all good, they're good Shilas. Anyway, if it's bite size, if it's bread itself and bite size, good to go. If it's bread itself and it's a funky shape, good to go. Some of the posts can write. You're not allowed to like put up a sign afterwards that says, regular looking challah, full size. This is milchik. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. You have to make it look funky. Something has to be, you can make it in the shape of like a D for dairy. You know, you just do something weird and then it's fine. So the Rishonim were split on what does Ke'in Torah mean? Does it mean small in size like the eye or does it mean funky shape? So the, the Shulchan Aruch embraces both sheet as Lakula. Good. Let's continue. We are at the, where are we? Yeah? I have no idea. Where, oh, here we go. Okay. Here, there. Oh, I'm looking at the top of the page. <laughs> third wide line. Unbelievable. Oh, no, he's starting at the third wide line. After the end of the second wide line. My Shna says the Gemara. Oh, uh, it says Vishavin, Shane Lashna Sisaba Poshrin. We saw at the end of the Bryce above that you're not allowed to use hot water when you are preparing matzah because it, um, it it hastens the process of leavening. And that's of course problem. We know 18 minutes is our line in the sand. Anything less than 18 minutes is matzah. Anything more than 18 minutes is gonna be chametz do raisa, mamish kichuta se'ara. It doesn't take much to get to chametz. Anyways, my shna, mi menachos, this rule of not using warm water doesn't seem to apply everywhere because by menachos, it's not, we have a Mishnah that writes, kol menachos ni loshim b'poshen, v'shtam l'shlo yech mitzu, no problem. By the menachos, we say you can use warm water as much as you want. Just make sure it doesn't become chametz. I, oh, why the difference? It says the Gemara, do you even know what you're asking? <laughs> what are you talking about? Im amru reason. you're saying that by the Kohanim who are referred to as the Zrizim, those who, uh, they work under a different brain. Their whole brain is about zeal. They're working sharp. Everything is totally on, uh, totally perfect. Yom Rubishain's reason. Eno doma zelazet. Stam a guy, I'm making chametz. You cannot use warm water. But by the menachos, when it's a kohen, he can be a zaris to ensure that it doesn't become chametz. Ihachi miltas nami lasis. We should allow for the soaking to take place. Alama amar Rabbi Zera, when we soak certain things. Amar Rabba bar Yirmi amar Shmuel. Chitin shal menachos ain losis and oso. There we said you're not allowed to. Says the Gemara. Lisha of his reason. He said the kneading of the dough is done of his reason, but the lasisa, the soaking of it, is lace of his reason. That's not done by people who are his reason, and because it's not done by people who are his reason, therefore we say no hot water. Only cold water. The lisha mi'isa is reason. Not true. Even the lisha can be done by someone who isn't a kohen. Vaksiv, the pasuk says, v'yatzakoleh hashemen. This is a girsa challenge here. The Gemara corrects it too. V'hivia el b'nei aharon hakohanim v'kamatz. Mikmitsa ve'elech mitzvas kahuna. Only from the kmitsa, from the grasping of the flower. Limit al yitzika uvalila. But the soaking, shekshir l'chol adam. Even the lisha can be done by anybody. Says the Gemara, right. Lisha... Nihidib is reason lessa. You're right that it's not done by people who is reason. Lav dafka that the lisha was done by a kohen. However, bimakom's reason isa. It had to be done in a specific place, which was a place of reason. It's in the mikdash. It wasn't in your backyard. It wasn't in your kitchen. It was in a makom's reasons. Amar mar lila kash kshera bizar. You weren't allowed to do it outside the Azara. It had to be done within the Azara. So I felt that you're not a Kohen and you're doing Lisha, but it's in a makom of Zrizus. When people were in the base of Mikdash, you're, I mean, just imagine the scene. Please, God, soon. It is a whole different world. Like you walk into this place. It, it's so majestic. It's so, your brain changes. You walk into the Mikdash, you become Mr. Perfect. Everything is going to be perfect. You're not making chametz by accident on Pesach. You're perfect. You're totally on your game. Excellent. La Fuke, the Sisa, Masha'en came when it comes to the soaking. That's the Ain of his reason, Viloba Makum's reason. That, has, that, that cannot have my impostion. That cannot have warm water because that's not done in a Makum's reason and is not done by someone who is reason. Another case where we see that potion is not problematic. Six lines from the bottom. Umaishnami Minchas Haomer. Why by Minchas Haomer? By the Korban that's brought to be Matir um, Yashan Chadash to uh, make food, uh, to make the flour edible, the Tanya. Minchas Omer Los Sinosa. When it comes to the Minchas Omer, you're allowed to soak it. The uh, the Tzobrinosa. Ah, very good. So we see there that it's uh, that it's allowed. Why do we not allow it? See, why do we allow it there? So it's Sibur shiny. It's different when it's Sibur it's shiny. Machlokas and Rashi, whether it's Sibur or Tzabur. Is it in the Tzibur? Because you're doing it for the people. You're being matir for the masses. So you'll be more of a Zaris. And therefore, my impostion is okay. Or do we say no, that it's Tzabur, that you're making such large amounts of it? And uh, Rashi here. Yeah. What is Tzobrinosa? 
that you're allowed to extract the liquid from it. What is with sober no so? What does it say? What's with sober no so? What? What does it say there? What do you got there, Mike? I'm trying to find what you're We're on the bottom of Lamed Vav Amid Aleph, about eight lines from the bottom of the page. It should be that you gather it in order to drip it out. Minchas Omer should be the oil, no? Losis in Osav, it's sober no Oh, Losis in the Minchas Omer, you soak it um, in order to prepare it in a seemingly. So you need to drink. Right, that's what Rashi says. The barley kernels are soaked in, and heat into a pile and drained yeah. to drain the water. But the point is that the liquid is not problematic. That you're what we said, my shna over there. We were talking about not doing my potion, but that's not a problem when it comes to the minchas omer. That's what it's talking about. Thank you for clarifying that. And seabor shiny, the halacha is that that's different by its seabor. The minchas omer was for the seabor, it wasn't for a yachin. All right, let's get into another uh, couple of sugyas. Tanar Abana, five lines from the bottom. Yachal yote adam yidechavasa bibikurim. A person is allowed. I'm sorry, we should ask. Maybe a person is allowed. Yachol. Maybe you can be Yotze, the mitzvah, the rights of matzah with Bikurim. Talmud Lomar, absolutely not, says the Tanakama. It has to be something that's matzah, it has to be edible everywhere. You can't use Bikurim because Bikurim have a limited uh, place where you're allowed to eat them, and therefore it doesn't count as matzah. Okay? Rabbi Kiva Omer, matzah umara. Based on the Pasuk Rashi, he says, al matzah sumrorim yochluhu. Um, based on the Pasuk that uh, compares matzah and marsha, the Gemara is a hekish. Ma maror she'enu bikurim. Just like maror is not part of the world of bikurim. Af matzah, it must also be the case that matzah is made out of that which is she'enu bikurim. Good. So it says the Gemara that he doesn't have the, the same problem. Imam maror she'en b'mino bikurim. But if it's true that by maror, there's no, there's never anything by maror that's uh, that's bikurim because bikurim is only the sheva, uh, only the sheva peros. Af matzah she'en b'mino bikurim. But matzah does have a couple of them. Because matzah is chita, right? Chita and seora. It says the Gemara, osi chita and seora and sheyesh b'mino bikurim. So maybe what we should say is that um, Chitin and Seorin are not allowed, but the other three of the Chamesh Yismini Dagon are allowed, says the Gemara. Tamalomar, that's for sure not true. Matos, Matos, Riba, all of them are allowed, says the Gemara. Matos, Matos, Riba, I don't understand. I Matos, Matos, Riba, then I feel the Bikurim Nami. Just the Pasuk, if the Pasuk is it going to include everything, then what's with the Hekish? Why do I need a Hekish at the bottom to end up with the same conclusion as the Pasuk of Matos, Matos, Riba? Says the Gemara, because of that, Hadar be Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva retracted his opinion. He no longer agrees to that Hekish. He has a use for it. The Bible also point this out. He has a use for the Hekish, but it's not here. Hadar be Rabbi Akiva, the Tanya. What is the Brysa, right? Yachol, Yatza Adam Yechavasa Bibikurim, another Brysa. The Brysa says that maybe one can be Yotze with Bikurim, Talmud Lomar. You, you may not. The same drush as Rabbi Yosef Lili from the bottom of Lamed Rav Maral. Matzah nechel is bechol moshavos. Yatsu bikurim. Sheinu nechel al alba. Eina einon nechalin bechol moshavos al birshalayin. So we say that by bikurim that it can't be eaten everywhere. Now this so far is nameless. We don't know that it's Rabbi Akiva yet. We'll get there soon. Yachol shani motze af meiser sheni. Maybe I should exclude meiser sheni. Talmalomar matzos matzos riba that I do include it. Okay, Uma Rais Le Rabos My Sershenu Hotzi Bikurim. Why do we include my Sershenu to be used as um, to be used as matzah, but we exclude Bikurim? Says the Gemara, Mar Beani My Sershenu Shi Yeshel Heter Bechol Moshavos. Because the Chol Apachos by My Sershenu, I could eat it technically everywhere. I could be Pode, and that's Kid Rabbi Eliezer. Well, Rabbi Elazar. It's corrected language here. Umotzi Ani Bikurim, but I exclude Bikurim from the midst of matzah. Shein Lehen Heter Bechol Moshavos. Uh, because it, it can't be eaten everywhere. It can only be eaten in Yerushalayim. So Maishr Shani has an exclusion to the rule. So then says the Gemara, Dhamma Rabbi Elazar, about Maishr Shani, what does he say? Minayin la Maishr Shani shenitma shepodin oso afilu b'Yerushalayim. If you have Maishr Shani, that is Tameh. So how do we know that it can be podin b'Yerushalayim? Talmud Lomar, ki lo suchal se'eso. Lo suchal se'eso. Let's read the full Pasuk here. The full Pasuk reads, you're far away. This pasuk assumes we're talking about tuma. That's the rechuk that the pasuk is speaking about. What does seiso mean? So the Gemara says, 
And from another Pasuk, we see, This was talking about when Yosef was with his brothers and they were eating masas as a reference to meals, it's a reference to food. So going back up two lines, You're not allowed to eat it. So that's what, how the Pasuk makes a reference that you can even be matur in Yushalayim. The Pasuk says that that's okay. Now, who is the author of this b'risa to show us that Rabbi Akiva retracted? Man shamasle, the Amar b'maister sheni nafik be. Who is the one who says that by maister sheni you are allowed to be yote the mitzvah of matzah? Answers the Gemara Rabbi Akiva. And if that's Rabbi Akiva, then so is the end of the Mishnah, which speaks about bikurim v'kamemayit lehu libikurim mi bechol moshvoseichem. We therefore see that he excludes bikurim from the same pasuk of. Rabbi Yossi Aglili, which shows us Shmamina Hadar Bey, that he retracted his own opinion. And therefore, when Rabbi Akiva at the bottom of Lamed Bav Aleph says, wait, the halacha is different because of the Hekish, he rejects that. It is not true. We would, we, we're not going to amend the Gemara. We're, we saw the shock of the Torah, but he rejects the, uh, his own opinion of, uh, of the Hekish being the source for Meister Shani and instead agrees with the source of Rabbi Yossi. Now let's analyze Rabbi Yossi Aglili. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yossi Aglili, why don't we um, make an analysis from the world of Lechem Oni? Maybe we should exclude this here as well. So the answer is, is that that can't be. We can't say that it's because of this, because Savar Lake Rib Shimon. He holds like Rib Shimon who holds the Tanya Bikurim Asurim Laonin. What does Rib Shimon hold? Rib Shimon Matir. You can't exclude something that is Mutter. So he holds like Rib Shimon. If Rib Shimon holds that an Onin is Mutter Bibikurim, then you can't say that Aninus is going to be the exclusionary factor because it's not exclusionary by him because he holds like Rib Shimon. My time at the Rabbanon, why do the rabbis hold the Bikurim or Asur to an Onin? Because the Chsiv Lo Suchal Lechol Bisharecha. We have a comparison between the world of Bikurim and the world of Maiser. That's why the Rabbanan hold what they hold, because of the Hashva, a hekesh between the world of uh, Maiser and the world of Bikurim. Um, Shimon, what does Rav Shimon say about that? Truma Karinu Rachman, it's called Truma Kitruma. It therefore must be like truma, ma truma muteres leonein. If a person is a kohen and they're be'aninus, they're allowed to eat truma. Bikurim are also muter be'onein. Okay, the Reb Shimon, he the hekesh lays like granted, he doesn't have to agree to the hekesh, but simcha mi amichta ksiva behu. What are you going to do about the pasuk? You still have a din of simcha. Even if you're going to say that it's mutter, but it has to still be eaten be simcha, the ksiva samach to becholato, answers the Gemara. That wasn't talking about the status of the person eating. It's just talking about the time of year. And with this drasha, we will end. It's not, we've learned that a person can bring Bikurim from Shavuos uh, and onwards, provided that he, uh, he can bring it then, maybe he can bring the Kore and he'd read the Psukim, he'd do the Kriya. But from Sukkis until Hanukkah, so then maybe, yes, you do bring the Bikurim, but you would not read it. So these are all just a bunch of sugyas that help us to learn a little bit more about the scope of what's considered to be matzah that is acceptable and matzah that is not acceptable. We'll stop here and pick up the nearest Hashem tomorrow night. Wishing you all a beautiful night, everybody. Yeah. Someone has suggested me